All right, Impact. Last week's Impact had a atrocious first hour, a horrible first hour, and a great, great second hour. This week, a really good first hour, and boy, what a shitty second hour they had. I'm going to, for once in my life, take the optimistic viewpoint. I'm going to take the last half of last week's show and the first half of this, week, this week's show and say they produce two straight hours of awesome TV. I guess it would have been two straight, yes. Sadly, there was seven days in between. <laughs> and then there was also... And there was shit on either end of it, so yes. there you go. We had a good video package opening up this show. It actually was really good. Angle and Tomco. We had, uh, for those of you that didn't listen to the show today, Figure Four Daily, Kevin Nash no-showed. I know that some huh. of you will be surprised to hear such a thing, but he did, in fact, not show up for the the program. He was supposed to call at noon. It is currently 11.27 p.m., and he has not called yet. So I'm thinking that it is, in fact, a, a no-show. But we had a, a show today. We had four guests on, Mike Coughlin talking UFC, and we had Oliver Kopp and Mike Sawyer talking UFC, and they were there live, actually. So they had a lot to uh, talk about, including some scoops about Ultimate Finer, some other stuff. And then we had Lance Storm on the show. And Lance Storm, of course, a, a vociferous critic of, of TNA many times. And he also noted that this video package was great. And then he noticed it would have been greater if it were building up over three or four weeks to a pay-per-view. Indeed. Well, it did not. <laughs> I, I, baby steps. <laughs> Just entertain me in the short term, then we'll worry about building to a long-term Well, they deal. could not even do that. By the time the show was over, they had failed. No, and by short term, I mean a segment. <laughs> we had Angle, AJ, and Karen, who, of course, were fighting. Morash was in a neck brace. The deal was that AJ finally decided he wasn't a geek anymore and was standing up to Angle. Kurt tried to blow him off, and AJ said he wasn't a goof. He was a three-time former champion. Angle laughed at him. Karen got in there. I think she got shoved or something. Angle snapped and told AJ not to touch his wife and said if AJ helped Tom Chris tonight, he not only was going to kick his ass, but AJ's ass as well. And he kicked him out of the office, and AJ said, fine, I'm gone. And I watched this, and it was like, did I miss four shows? Why is AJ Styles all of a sudden a tough guy standing up to Kurt Angle? What the fuck did I miss here? <laughs> I, I, I See, that's... I don't know a why. I don't have a why. All, all, all I know is they had the really awesome Tom Angle video package. They had AJ not being a geek, and Kurt not being a goof, and both guys being... Badass, especially Kurt being a complete badass, and I thought, holy cow, <laughs> this makes no sense, but it's better. Yeah, this was better than the usual bullshit. Team 3D cut a promo with the pay-per-view, talking about how they're going to kill the X Division, and and he was cutting his promo, and he had all this crazy heat, and then all of a sudden they cut to a shot of Black Machismo, Chris Saban, and Alex Shelley dressed up as old-school Dudleys being wacky, and you could just hear the heat die in the building. That's bad. So as they were ranting, Team 3D ran in and beat him up, rather violently, in fact. And Mike Tenet, of course, had to alert us that the good guys were mocking the bad guys and were not really the Dudleys. <laughs> yes, had to alert us to this fact. <laughs> yeah. So then Team 3D dragged them down to ringside and continued beating them, and Machismo gigged, and Saban and Shelley got put through tables, and Bubba finally screamed that they were, uh, they were little boys in a man's world, talked about how they were... They were heroes in ECW, legends in WWE, and now gods in TNA. And if God was a heel, he'd be in Team 3D, and he warned the X Division not to show up at the pay-per-view. And this was a fabulous, fabulous promo by Bubba Ray Dudley. Yes. And it actually ended up being great stuff. And the show was on a roll. The, the beatdown went on forever, but it, it established the point that, hey, the heels have just gotten the heat on the baby faces in this angle. They've laid them down and laid them out and had their way with them, and then and, and, and the Bubba cut his fiery promo... It was awesome. They didn't rush anything. They did not go to the back. They just let the angle be what it was. They came. In pl they get plenty of time. Then they went to commercial, and then they came back, and the most amazing thing happened. They recapped it. Yes. See, had a recap package of what just happened. Yes. In case someone had happened to, you know, step away from the television for a second, I was astounded. <laughs> this show was like 50 minutes old, and I was so happy. This was a thumbs up. Yes. And we had Crystal interviewing Scott Steiner and Petey Williams. Steiner now apparently is having his promos written as if he's a rock. He actually used the line, he screwed up Crystal's name, and then said, it doesn't matter what your name is. Zing! So low rent. <laughs> so she told him that if Team 3 won at the pay-per-view, there would be no more X Division, and he couldn't get a title shot at the X Division title. And he said, Petey, did you know anything about this? And Petey goes, that's a rumor, but it's your problem, not mine. 
And Scott said, well, listen, if it's my problem, it's your problem. Moral of the story is Scott doesn't watch the show. Correct. Scott has no idea what is going on in this program. And why would he? But th- th- this was wacky, but it was short enough I didn't care. And then it just went right into the next match. I actually like the the, uh, the angle with Scott Steiner being the one guy that doesn't actually watch the show well, and he, never has any idea what's going yeah, on. Yeah, it works. He, he thinks the, he thought, first he thought the exhibition was all about being four feet tall and 100 pounds. He just shows up to beat ass. <laughs> he, he doesn't show- care about all the other bullshit. He goes to do his job or he's assigned to do, and that's all. So we had Rock and Rave infection against Steiner and Petey. They're a team now. Rave apparently is the new young Billy Gunn. So I should tell you what he, he was he, wearing he, and did with his hair. A wacky single ponytail thing. So Petey stole a bunch of spots from Scott's arsenal and this and that. And finally Scott ran in and ran wild, suplexing everybody out of their boots and screaming, that's how you do it, to Petey. Tagged him back in. And as Petey set up for the Canadian Destroyer, Scott grabbed both briefcases and started heading to the back. Petey yelled at him, and so Scott clonked him with one of them and then bailed, and Rave got the pin, and Christy bounced her boobs up and down, and there you go. Rock Rave Infection, this is week two of the Guitar Hero phase. I now love these men. They are now both so over-the-top wacky heels. They've both been this, the most boring dudes I've ever seen forever. Forever. It's been years I've been watching these guys. I've never cared about either one. Now they're awesome. They're fake rock stars, and it's great. Then we had the best video package I've ever seen. The Bullet was training young BG. The Bullet can move. Oh, yeah. The Bullet is, in fact, in better shape than his son. The best part was BG struggling on the incline press, and so Bullet grabbed the bar and curled it back up to the rack. And then at the end of all this running, BG yacked, and God damn, this was great. This was wacky fun. Yes. Hernandez and Billy Gunn. Salinas has enormous breasts. And by the way, for those of you wondering why she is now Salinas and not Shelly Martinez, they wanted a name that was Hispanic. Her name is Martinez. Yeah. That's a Hispanic name. This is true, though. Is that not the best story you've ever heard? How retarded are these people? <laughs> That's the best story I've ever heard. They couldn't heard. just call her Martinez. No. What's tards? So then we had, uh, we had some stuff. The voodoo chick. Or Selena's tried to interfere and the Voodoo Chick broke it up and she tried to throw powder and accidentally hit Kip and then Hernandez pinned him and anyway the point is this annoyed me because they had interference twice the first of which meant nothing why do you do that Oh, well, because they're TNA don't do that everybody if you have an interference if you need to have interference you don't need it twice because then the second interference is just it's it anyway it's just lame. we've given the speech about nine thousand so times angry. it's like they distracted the ref and it led to nothing. And then he distracted the ref again, and it led to the finish. And I was like, why did you waste my time with the first distraction? Why? Just to annoy me, apparently. I, I don't have an answer for you. So so, anyway. so Kip yelled at the voodoo queen. He made, made fun of her that all she does is shake, and she hasn't done anything for, anything for them since they hired her, and then he fired her. No, actually it was worse. He said, you wear too much makeup. <laughs> too much makeup, yes. You shake around too much. You dress like you're straight out of the 80s, and you talk too much. Killed the joke. That yes. line utterly killed the joke. But, of course, it's TNA, so they don't understand. That's what they do. They understand comedy. Yeah, so then he fired her. Oh, and it gets better. After he goes, you wear too much makeup, you shake around like you're having a seizure, you're dressed straight out of the 80s, and you talk too much, Don West had to make sure to say, why she never talks. <laughs> yes, because this is TNA. It's comedy for fuckwits. For people who don't get the joke and have to have it explained to them. So, yes, Kip fired her. Yes. I went into this thinking, Kip James and Hernandez, this could be ugly. First thing I noticed was that, holy crap, Kip James is a gigantic man. Dude, that's, we say that every time he's in the ring with anybody large. Yes. and it, it, Or anybody small. It rings true again. Then they had a match, and you know what? It was okay. It I was, was fine. It was fine. And then yeah. uh, Shelly Martinez's breasts are, in fact, the new stars of the LAX Act. The, <laughs> Hernandez and Homicide are completely secondary. It's all about her tits. And they had their little match. What a pig. I'm, I'm merely stating how it's presented. <laughs> they, 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 they do the entrance, and she's up in the apron gyrating, and the camera zooms in on her chest as they play the theme song. That's all it's about. Yeah. I'm just stating how it's presented. So then they did the match, and it was fine, and then Voodoo Chick got fired and was so heartbroken that, well, I guess we'll talk about that later. AJ met with Tom Coe and said, listen, we're the champions of the world, but I don't want you taking this match because Kurt's my boss, and Tom Coe told him to shut up, and... Say so he should have punched him last week, and AJ was acting like a schoolboy, he said, having fallen for Karen. AJ said, she's into me. She told me. I have her wrapped around my little finger. 
Tomko said, leave me alone. I'm doing this match, and that's final. We had the all-access Brock Lesnar plug, which was awesome. And uh, the best part about this is you got Brock Lesnar there swinging tires or whatever the fuck he's doing, and Angle's talking about what a badass he is, and it's just great. And then all of a sudden they cut to Messias and a jobber, Corey Javis, I believe is his name. <laughs> the first thing they did was they they, they, they had this, you know, the, the, this Brock Lesnar doing the real fight. Then they cut to the Barred Wire Massacre package, which is all about torture and freak show and blood. And they called it, and I quote, a masochist's dream. Oh, yeah. Not a sadist's, a masochist's. So apparently they're just going to take turns running into the barbed wire over and over again. <laughs> then Macias came out, and he's got the robe on and the purple robe, and his, he's got fre- freaky Jim Mitchell there with the beard and the, and the purple suit. And he's and Macias has this rubber Halloween mask on. And that's when you go you go from Brock Lesnar doing a real fight to Judas Macias trick-or-treating. Yes. Fail. Then after Macias won, Jim Mitchell cut a promo about Chris and how he was Chris's father and... His delivery is so awesome, but this storyline is so ridiculous in 2008 that it's such a turnoff. Well, it's so pointless. It's again, so stupid. Again, after right, immediately after the UFC package where the feud is based around who will win, this feud is based around, around who is whose father or brother. And by the way, they repeatedly refer to Mitchell or refer to Abyss and Macias as stepbrothers. Now, Mitchell has said he's oh, Macias' God. father. And now he's no one cares but you. And he's Chris's father. That would not make them step brothers. That would make them half brothers. God damn it! Thank you, Vince. You're welcome. This was driving you crazy all night, and I was like, no one cares, literally in this world, except you. But I do care. That's why I had to say it. Jesus. Shark Boy cut a promo. Said he had an open challenge for anybody, and no one came out. Don't ask me why. So then he beat up Slick Johnson and gave him a stunner, and then a bunch of geeks came out and he gave them stunners, and it got over. The people were actually cheering and going crazy, and I thought, what is happening? <laughs> I don't know. Shark Boy is about to actually become the most popular guy in this company, being Steve Austin. Yes, for, for me personally, the joke is old. I'm, I'm no longer laughing at it, but the people still love it, so whatever. Bunch of shit happened in Cornette's office. I don't know what. I know Nash was there. I know AJ was there. I know Cornette said, slow down, <laughs> cowboy. Of, there's a lot of shouting. Kevin Nash referred to uh, Morgan as giant Val Kilmer, which is one of the worst insults I've ever heard. I don't know what that <laughs> meant. Pitching about contracts, and AJ wanted the match broken up, and it was just lame. Then we had AJ in the ring with Cornette. AJ still had a stupid-ass crown on, uh, and Cornette made the match. Uh, AJ special referee Tom Angle. I cried. I cried. Guaranteeing. I had been so excited for this match, and they put this in there, and I suddenly knew, gonna be shit. It's gonna, they, 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 yes, they, they ruined, they sabotaged their own show right here. They literally said, the main event will suck, everyone. Yeah. It'll be stupid. They promised Awesome Kong's first interview, but our new manager, a chick in a veil with the fakest accent you've ever heard, read a statement, and it was dumb. They have turned Kong into a cartoon character, and they are fast on track to ruining her. Yes, it certainly didn't her no favors as as she uh the, the the manager chick said that Kong is a woman of peace. And then Kong smiled. Then the manager chick said, Unless you agitate her and then Kong made a meaning face. Lame. Failure. ODB Voodoo Chick and Angelina Love. Speaking of failure I thought this match was a complete mess. Angelina took the ref by rubbing her breasts in his face. ODB had a pin on Voodoo, but there was no ref. So as ODB went to figure out what was up, Love slid under her legs and covered Voodoo. Or no, she covered Voodoo, and the ref slid under OB, ODB's legs and counted the pin. And and I was thinking, why did they just have ODB not win this match? Yes. Okay. What what, what is what does Angelina Love have to do with this ODB <laughs> uh, Awesome Kong storyline? Let, let, let's start with that. ODB has a title match against Awesome Kong in two weeks. You would think here she's in a three-way. Okay, it's going to be very simple. The other two are going to gang up on her. She's going to overcome the odds, fight them both off, and get the win and look strong going into the pay-per-view. Simple? Effective? Sure. What they did instead was they had ODB and Roxy. They both wanted to be the one to beat up Angelina. So one of them would beat up Angelina, and then ODB would shove her out of the way and beat over Angelina for a while. So basically, Angelina was the baby face here. Why? I don't know. I have no idea. 
Second of all, the match was just no good in general. They were falling all over the place, and it was it was just just bad and ugly. And then the finish came, and I just I was gobsmacked, flabbergasted, <laughs> astounded. I, I I could not believe what had happened. It was so it was so pointless, and I didn't understand what what the point of any of it was. Best of all, immediately afterwards, OD, ODB was outraged, and so she beat up Angelina Moore so to to quote get her heat back unquote. And I just know. Somewhere backstage, there was a man who was saying, "Everyone thinks everyone thinks ODB is going to win this. We need to swerve them. We need to swerve them, so we'll have ODB not win and then beat her up at the end. Bad idea. Bad bad idea. And also, we should note: yes, Roxy Laveau, 20 minutes after being fired, was still out here wearing too much makeup, shaking around, and dressing like Stevie Nicks. Still wasn't talking." Still not talking. I want to know. I my my question was much more simple than that long winded tirade that you just went on, which was simply, if Angelina was going to win, why did you beat her up afterwards? Same thing. <laughs> to make sure nobody gets over. That's the goal. It's to suppress all stardom. We had a quick Tomco angle brawl backstage, which was a completely unnecessary segment, and they immediately cut away. They replayed the Charmel Robert Root angle again, which just brought joy to my heart because this is like the first angle that they're really making a big deal of in 2007. And by the time this damn year's over, it may be the only thing I remember for that very reason. Today was in the ring and interviewed Booker on the big screen, and he said Charmel was doing well, would be back soon, thanked everybody for their support. Then Robert Root and Peyton came out and, and demanded they go to break, and today he said, Since when are you and the man in charge? And then Mike today said, Let's go to break! <laughs> So apparently the answer is, since right now. We had a Rude, James Storm, and Peyton against Sanjay Dutt, Eric Young, and Tracy. Yes, Peyton and Tracy in the ring together, unbilled, no advertising, just on impact. Sure. These people have no patience. So we got the wacky um, the wacky uh, girls going after each other, the cat fight. Tracy chased her to the back. Storm super kicked Eric Rude. Gave him the Fisherman Suplex for the pin. Rude is awesome. He's another guy that should be pushed towards a title. If you'll recall, he was doing something with Angle and then just... He's not no more. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Things changed. Yeah. All right, so. here's what happened in this match. They had the heat on Eric Young. Oh, be- we forgot. At the end, Booker ran down. So the thing on the big screen apparently been a swerve. It had been a trap. He was not actually via satellite. He was backstage. He flew all the way there so he could chase Robert Root yes. to the back. He chased down to the ring. Root saw him and ran away and, and Booker chased him to the back and that was it. That was that. Okay, here's the story of this match. They were, had the heat on Eric Young. They were beating him up. My telephone rang. I went to answer it. I had a brief conversation. I hung up. I looked up. Robert Root was pinning a man. I missed the hot tag. I missed the comeback and I missed the finish. I went back to my phone. I was on the phone for 25 seconds. <laughs> that is not enough time to do the hot tag, the comeback, and the finish. But in TNA, they found a way. Thumbs down, everybody. Thumbs down. Kaz did a promo. Speaking of thumbs down, I don't know what. It was a failure. That's all you need to know. He was apparently dressed up like Black Rain. He was called... White sunshine. sunshine. White sunshine, because, you know, rain, sunshine, black, even though white. rain is not the liquid in the black rain name. This was so stupid. And then it peaked when he said next week there will be a match involving poles. Four of them. God. Okay. Here's no, quite down. Cornette was in the ring for the contract signing. I know you're just going to rant about something. Is it is it a value and will take less than 15 minutes? It explains how stupid Kaz is and how stupid the show is. Well, go ahead. Kaz is angry at Dustin Rhodes, Black Green. So he challenges him to a match where there are four poles. Three of them have mousetraps in them. So Kaz is so angry, he is going to challenge Dustin to a match where there is a three out of four chance that he himself will get struck by mousetraps. Yes. Stupid. Cornette was in the ring for the contract signing. Morgan was there with Cornette, and Nash was there with Joe. And Cornette was acting stressed out, and he couldn't find a pen. Morgan said he had one. He threw it at Joe's face. Joe went nuts. Morgan pie-faced him, so Joe gave him a backdrop driver through the table. Nash cackled. Joe tore up the contract, threw it on Morgan's body. To the back! I asked the question again. Why is Joe a babyface, and why would anyone give a shit about a babyface bitching about how much money he's making? I don't get it. You see, when you asked earlier about who cares about the, the Mitchell Abyss Messiah storyline, this is my who cares. 
this is my ultimate who cares. Who cares about Joe's contract or the money or Nash's ad- advisor role or Morgan's jealousy or Cornette's incompetence because he didn't bring a fucking pen to the contract signing? Shouldn't this all be about the title? You would think. You Why would is think. this about what Joe's making? Is he going to send me a paycheck? Moreover, if Joe had the dream contract and he gave in all his demands, why did he tear it up? Now he's back to being unemployed. No, here's what you missed. He's not unemployed. This was a, a renegotiation. So when Cornette said, soon he'll sign this contract and we'll be able to control him, he was currently under contract. Right. So why can't they control him now? I don't know. I hate this shit. So, so Joe tore up his own big raise. Yeah. Great. Yeah, because because a pen had been thrown at him. And now we're supposed to care. Okay. We're supposed to get behind him. A pen was thrown at him, so he... Th- he tore up a great offer, and now we're supposed to get behind him when he bitches about his pay the next time? If I go into work on Monday, and they offer me a contract paying me 15% more than the highest paid guy, and then throw a pen at me, I'll, I'll pick the pen up off the floor and sign it. Immediately. Not Joe. Joe's a man of... He's a, a hero. I don't know what he is, except part of a bad program. Then we had Angle and Tomko with AJ as ref, presumably non-title. I don't know if they ever actually said, but it was assumed, I guess. Assume nothing. My my teacher once told me in junior high, TNA just assumes everything, or assumes we know everything. So, of course, AJ immediately starts doing slow counts. Match, dead. <laughs> From the get-go. Out of the gate. They ruined this. I wanted to see this match so bad, and they ruined it. They ruined everything. It is amazing. So... Of course, they do a bunch of near falls, which the pace of the match and the the, the pacing and, and, and everything is just killed by AJ's wacky slow counts. And finally, uh, AJ got knocked out of the ring or something like that, and, and Christian ran down and hit Angle with the belt. And the story was that neither Christian nor Tomko knew this, but then AJ got back in the ring and did the longest recount ever. Not only did this show fall off a cliff, it fell into a deep abyss at this point. It may still be falling. And Karen yelled at AJ afterwards, and of course it was to the back for a interview with Christian, and he said, um, Tomko says he wants to do what's best for Tomko, so do I. At which point Mike Tanay immediately said, did you hear what he just said? He said, Tomko says he wants to do what's best for Tomko, so do I. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> show is such, such fuck-witted people. It's a slow-brained people. Watch this show. They ruined this. And again, I ask the question. If you've got a championship match booked for February, and you've also got a championship match booked for March, why, on the last show in January, did you have a guy beat your champion? I don't know. I don't have a good answer for this. I don't have a good answer for any of the segment. You've covered everything except one. We here's one we ask every week too. Why do these guys work so hard? Because <laughs> Kurt or Kurt and Tomko were trying their damnedest to have the best the, the best match they could in absolutely impossible conditions. So they would go a million miles an hour. There would be a cover. Everyone would stand there. Everyone would look up at AJ. AJ would hold up his hands, he would drop down, he'd count one, he'd beg the guy to kick out, he would count two, he'd say, come on, kick out, kick out, he'd raise his arm, and it started to come down, the guy would kick out, at this point, here's what really annoyed me, Mike, Do- Mike Tanay and Don West would mark out for these near falls, <laughs> they were actually into this match, Kearney would kick out of a 13 count, but he'd be out before 14, and Don West would say, oh, he almost had him that time. <laughs> Like it was a fair and legitimate contest. And I, I, I watched... Who could enjoy this? How? <laughs> I, I don't... Name me one person on the face of the earth who could have sat down at, on the, the, the end you. of a Thursday night. This, it's all the, the people that will defend the show, their excuse will only be, it's better than WWE. Which it's not, but they hate <laughs> WWE so bad that they think that this is better. These are the people that enjoy this product. Even if you think it's better. No. Even if you uh, have such a blind spot for WWE that you think this is superior, that doesn't mean it's good. No, they think it's good, though. 
Who could sit down at the end I don't of a long know, Thursday? I don't know. I must ask this question. 1.6 million people that do. No, there can't be. There are. <laughs> there must be one guy with 1.6 million boxes. That <laughs> I would find much more plausible. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way 1.6 million people can <laughs> go to work all day, go to soccer practice, pick the kids up, come home, at the end of the long day, watch Impact. It can't be done. One this guy with 1.6 million boxes. That is that I'd buy. I will not buy millions of people sitting down to watch this show. That I, can't happen. I don't know. I don't care. This show. This show is bullshit. Thumbs down. This show infuriated me. <laughs> you Fuck ruined you, it. TNA. You ruined it, TNA. <laughs> you ruined everything. You bastard.